CAU. If you're trying to grow your business, add diversity. What you do? It'll climb the tracks in university. When it comes to getting clients, you face adversity. You need to hit up climb the tracks in university. Climb the tracks, 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 Profit, freedom, and impact. Go to paydadplaybook.com. If you're trying to grow your business, add diversity. What you do? Hit up client of trace in university. Hey, when it comes to getting clients, you face adversity. You need to hit up client of trace in university. Hey, hey. Paydadplaybook.com. That's P A I D ad playbook.com. Hey, what's up, my friends? Dr. Marquette Russell here to Can Client kind of Attraction. Welcome to this brand new episode of the School of Client kind of Attraction. Now, a lot of times people are, they missing the specific systems that's required. A lot of times people focus on strategies, they focus on tactics, but they miss the right systems. So what are the systems you may be missing that's a lot, that's keeping you from actually growing and scaling to the level that you want? Well, in today's episode, we're going to dive into that. And Dr. Me and Joseph are going to share the systems that they actually implement to their business to actually help them grow and scale and actually even build out a whole new office in their city. And Rochelle Shaw is going to be actually interviewing them. And Rochelle is our president of communications. She's going to be pulling out and extracting everything that they actually implement to actually grow and scale their multi-million dollar business. So let's go ahead and jump the episode right now. All right. Hey, everybody. It is your girl, Rochelle Shaw. I am president of communications here at Client Attraction University. And there are some days that, you know, I do kind of funky things here, always dealing with problems, making sure that our clients have the best experience ever. But it's days like today that I absolutely love, where I get to talk to some of my favorite people, our favorite clients who have done amazing things while they've been in the program and get to kind of brag on them a little bit and also let them brag on Mark Wall too, because, you know, I have to kind of suck up to the boss a little bit, right? (laughs) That's when it all makes some fun. So um, welcome today to Dr. Mia Cowan and Joseph Brown. Yay! Thanks for having us. Hey, Michelle. What up? Y'all, I didn't get to see you the last time, but I will definitely right. see you at the next retreat. You know, sometimes life gets in the way, but um, I'm excited that I will get to see you. So please introduce yourself and what y'all do. I am Dr. Mia and this is Joseph. I am the B3 specialist and a board certified physician. I help women and men suffering with weight gain, fatigue, and sexual dysfunction improve their quality of life through our wonderful Mevella solutions, which include total wellness, hormone pellet therapy, weight management, as well as intimacy solutions. And Joseph. Uh, I am Joseph Brown. I am the CEO and the Men's Health and Intimacy uh, Consultant, and I help men seek their you, younger self. So, Using we'll just own. take that for what that is, right? <laughs> <laughs> you help them get back to their younger selves. Yes, exactly. There we go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We love that. Okay, yes. we love that. Yes, so we basically, do. we keep we make relationships better. Yes. We make yeah. people have a live a better life through total mm-hmm. wellness, and we teach women and men how to live well, age well, and experience everlasting intimacy. Yes, yes, yes. Because this is a big problem. I know, you know, like I was laughing with my daughter the other day. So she's 16, right? And I was saying that uh, her aunt and her uncle, like, even though they don't like, but that they do, right? And that they still kind of get it on. And she was like, oh, oh my gosh. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, but they're old and they, they aren't old, right? I'm like, she's 58 and he's 63. What? So what are you supposed to stop at a certain right. age? Like, no. Yes, right? <laughs> I think so many people get caught up in that. And so you are he, true advocates are, you're not supposed to stop at a certain age, correct? No, not at all. Until not you all. die. It is to give from God that you can experience until you die, whether you have a partner or not. Right. Yes. And, and, yes. and what we have realized is the days of old, and we can say our grandparents, right? Our grandparents, if you ever went to see them or visit them, some of them did sleep in separate rooms and things like that. But back then, physicians and other people who thought they knew, saying these were normal circumstances of aging. 
you know, which these are not normal circumstances of aging. Just technology hadn't reached that point to where we could tell people, no, this is not normal. This is something you can't, there's something you can do about this. Sure. Because I bet you it saved so many marriages, huh? Oh, my Absolutely. God. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And even just without the intimacy, just like the, even the hormone balance, when you think about when women actually go through menopause and all right. the different changes they go through. And if you think about that age, that's around the 40s. And that's the most common time of divorce, too, mm -hmm. because when women are going through those times, even though they're not in what we consider true menopause, there's may still be having cycles, but their fatigue, their libido is low. They don't enjoy intercourse as much. They can't sleep. They become more anxious. They can't focus and remember. They're tired. They're getting gaining weight. So that affects not only their personal confidence and it affects them professionally, but also their personal relationships right. are negatively affected. Like I've had women to tell me if I had come to you two years ago, I would still be married. And it's the same thing with men too, you know, because we get to the point where we start, we have fatigue and our libido gets down and then we're not having the type of erections we were having. You know, yeah, we might have one, but it's not the same. Right. You know, it's not the same. Right. So at that point, it could, you know, we could lose confidence in even trying to do it. Yeah. You know, so we decide, uh, I don't even, I don't even want to have that letdown. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, and then the, what other people don't realize is by having intimate situations with your partner, yeah. you're really building your health. You know, you're building your health, your heart health. You know, your uh, respiratory, everything, you know, is being built up because you're having more intimate situations. Yeah. And studies even show that men who have regular intercourse decrease yep. their risk of a recurrent heart attack by like 40 percent. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. <clears throat> Women who still have intercourse. And enjoy intercourse a couple times a week, live about five years longer than women who don't. Right. So we know that intimacy plays a huge role in your total wellness, wellness as well absolutely. as your health. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, well, so my goodness. Right. right. <laughs> All just great, great stuff that I think the world needs to know. Right. Absolutely. So when you first like discovered this and we're trying to communicate that with the world. What was happening? Like, what did your business look like before you got here to Client Attraction University? Hmm. So before I got to Client Attraction University, I would say we were we were already thinking a lot of those things, but we didn't really know how to put it out to the world how the way we could learn. We didn't know how to communicate right. it. So a lot of these services we've been doing. So I've been doing hormone pellet therapy for yeah. men, men and women. Mm -hmm. um, I started off doing some of the vaginal rejuvenation procedures for women because I'm a gynecologist. So that made sense. But then once I started dealing with women in relationships, they wanted to make sure that their husbands could do, you know, continue to be intimate without having a erectile dissatisfaction. So we added that on. But I think before we knew what we wanted to do, but I think now that we've become a part of Client Attraction University, we know how to communicate that more effectively and we know how to have a bigger presence in not just our community, but in the nation and in the world. Right. You know? Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's, that's exciting. You know, because I, I think that because intimacy is so, is so tough, right, that people automatically think it's them. And so, especially when the husband doesn't want to, I think the wife automatically says, it's me. Yeah. Right? And by or when she doesn't want to, he automatically says, well, it's because of me. Right. And oftentimes it's those things that you shared earlier. Right. Is that not correct? And and yes. Now, yes, and also is now we have the opportunity and ability to communicate with specific individuals, right? We can target the man and we can target the woman, okay? We we'll target the man and say, hey, listen, it's not her, it's you, okay? You know, you're getting older, your testosterone is lowered, you know, you are not don't have the same erection, you don't have the same libido, you don't have the same drive. And okay? Confidence and now, you don't have now, the same confidence exactly. because of all that stuff is compounded over the last few years that you've been seeing this income, this decline, you know. Right. And so now we can communicate directly with the individual we want to get to instead of mass producing or going out to so many people. Now we can go directly to that person and say, this is you. Yeah, we can help you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, you know, even. You know, I'm, you get into habits, right? And you say, well, you used to walk by me and, and pat me on the bottom, you know, and you don't do that anymore. Do you not find me, right? And it, <laughs> but it, it had nothing to do with, 
that they don't right. find them attractive. It has to do with you know all that stuff that's going on in your head. Right. Yeah. And the relief, though, like the relief that you see, like, you know, when I did, I did a couple consults because I do consults virtually. And I did one yesterday with somebody who really loves her husband. Mm-hmm. Like she is in love with her husband. And she was like, you know, I've been feeling so bad. And he mentioned to me that whenever I reject him, it like pierces him in the heart. And she's like, that's not what I want. I love my husband. I'm attracted to him. She's like, but now I'm just so tired with the kids and with having everything else. And I really just don't have the desire. Right. And so when I reiterate and let women know that this is very common. Yes. Many women experience this in their late 30s, early 40s. They start to have this decline, but it's not you, it's not your relationship, it's not your husband, it's your it's your hormones. Yeah. I can replace your hormones and balance your hormones, and you will be back to the yeah. old Mary or the old, you know what I mean? Right. The one 15, 20 years ago when you remembered why you enjoyed sex because you had orgasms every time. And then you remember how close you and your partner were when you're intimate. So, you know, you have to have that emotional intimacy and that connection, but you're going to enhance the emotional intimacy by really participating in the physical intimacy and vice versa. You need them together, not one or the other. Oh, my gosh. So, so needed, you know, so Mm -hmm. needed as a savior to relationships. So now you've been here a while, already had a thriving practice, you know, so so we're not going to take credit for that. It was decent. It was decent. <laughs> it was so we, were, we were getting to the point where we were starting to grow. We weren't where we wanted to be. And we definitely got to where we're trying to get much faster and more and exponentially, you know, in that short amount of time. So I'll say that we, you know, it appeared that I was a very successful practice. You know, people knew me. We had a great brand. Um, they knew what we did. But really, in actuality, I would say we became a successful practice over the last two years because we've learned how to really run a corporation and not a business. Got it. Not a business. Right, right, right. Well, p- part of it is you guys are members of our seven figure society. And that's what we do in our seven figure society, right? Uh, is that we we teach you how to run this thing so that it is a well-oiled machine, not just kind of a sporadic, a random up and down, right? Get rid of the roller coasters is what we like to say, so that you can predict what your next three months will look like. Yes. And that we reverse engineer them number wise. How has that helped with building the practice? Well, it's helped. It's helped us a lot. And over the last year, it's helped us even more because we were able to really see where we we were going to take a decline in business as well, because we we did some major purchases. We made we bought a building. You know, we upgraded everything, you know, so to me. But in, in doing that, and this is all because we learned this during CAU, and doing that is we realized where we had to take a couple steps backwards to go forward. To go forward. You know, we had to take a couple steps back, settle down, get all the processes in order, yep. you know, in order for us to take off in January like we're doing. You know, so that last quarter, we didn't make as much as we made last year in, you yeah. know, in the fourth quarter. We still did exactly, we did exactly what we projected to do. We did exactly what we did each month of October, November, December. We did exactly what we projected to do. We didn't do as well as last year, but we needed to do that in order to spring forward like we're doing right now. You know, because we have goals that we need to make by the end of this year. But without those processes, there's no way we'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I say that he's saying it because we didn't go up. But I don't think that we've made less. And I know that overall, even with this year of bringing on bigger systems, investing in people, helping us to do those things, you know, bringing a new EMR, having to take, you know, some time down and not see as many patients for a whole quarter. We still made at least 20 percent more than we made the year before. Where if we had not been in this mass twenty percent over the whole year, yeah, over not the whole, whole year, year, not the but not whole, that last quarter. right, right. That's what yeah, I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I just wanted to make you know give yeah. them a real clear picture. Yeah. Like, yeah, we didn't grow exponentially like we've been doing every quarter compared yeah. to the last year. That's yeah. what we didn't do fourth quarter, but we still did well because 
CAU and Marquel has taught us how to really run a business and plan and project and really look at the data and then use the data for better projections and right. predictions so that we could pre- prepare ourselves for all of this right. newness and all of this greatness and all of this bigness and all of these, you know, sweat and tears that come along with growth that you didn't even think about. Like everybody wants to grow. It's so exciting, but you didn't think about all the stuff that comes with growth, you know? Right. Right. You know, I, I think it was T.D. Jakes who said new level, new devil. Right. Yeah. And so as it is, it's not like and even, you know, for many years, I think uh, folks who, who aren't in growth mode think that it's a straight line. It's a trajectory. And it is nowhere near that. You know, it goes up and then it goes down. And, yeah. And you go oh, like hold up, on a second. Down and then flat for a moment, you yep. know. And that's yep. what we needed to be. We needed to be flat for this for these three months. You sure. know, at least not down. Yeah, we flat <laughs> right. For three months. Right, right. Yeah, flat, flat is good. And and sometimes right. I think people they get confused by what it should truly look like, right? right. And so uh, I love that you guys are just telling the truth. That's that's like perfect. And you know, by the way, you just kind of skimmed over that you bought a building. Hello, like yeah. that should be applauded. Like, like there's not many yeah, businesses, so yeah, much. hell yeah, yeah. out yeah. there buying buildings, right? And buying the building, and obviously it was a much bigger building than the one that you had before. And so there's there's that investment. There's there's preparing for that. So I think you staying stagnant, you know, as someone who who has built, you know, several multi-million dollar businesses. Mm-hmm. Staying stagnant is a good thing during that process, right? right? It helps you be predictable. And that's the one thing that I think that most business owners don't have is that predictability. And so right. that when you can predict it to stay stable, that's a, a 10 out of 10. And yeah. like that. so you got to um, have two things. You got to have predictability, yep. predictability and yep. stickability too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you gotta be able to stick with it. Yeah. When even when it comes down a little bit, you got to be able to say, "Okay, we we still in the game, you know. We still in the game. Let's just we this is watch our numbers, watch the data, and see where we need to go from here." And that's what we're focused on. We focus on the data, what's making money, what's making money, and how we're gonna push what's making money. That's what we're focused on because we want to grow. I mean, we're growing now, but we have our goals are. So so much larger than where we are right now. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you make it sound like you guys are like just barely hitting six figures, you know, what I mean? but you're, uh, you're uh, so uh, far uh, past uh, seven, uh, you know what I mean? So, so let's, you know, just have big goals and you know what? Yeah. Your the conversation is different when you're in a room with certain people, and that's what CAU is for us too. Yeah. We're in a room with people with much bigger and better goals. You know what I mean? So what we thought was a big deal, and we thought we were getting there maybe two or three years ago. We thought we would have arrived. Now our goals have increased that much more because we see all the greatness around us, and we realize we can do even more than we ever thought we could. You know? Yeah. So. Well, I always, I always, I always love to hear that because it means that number one, that we're doing what we're supposed to do. (laughs) And of course, number two, that we're all going in the right direction. So um, I don't want to keep y'all from your multi-million dollar business. Right. But tell me, tell me, how do do y'all feel about the experience at CAU, what Marquel has done uh, for y'all and where you see yourself in the next three to five years? Let you go first. Well, I just feel really blessed to have been led to this in this university, you know. Um, and I, you know, I got a whole bunch of degrees, unnecessary degrees, bunch of degrees, but I would say by far, this is one of the best experiences I've ever had with real education and education that we can put, you know, to use right away and that has not faded away and become obsolete because of time. We are learning new things every day with technology. We're staying in the present and the future tense with what we're learning to keep up, you know, with what's going on in the world as far as business goes. So I say it was one of the best decisions that we've ever made. And it's because of all the things that we've learned. Us, And then it's also the people who run CAU, the entire team and how they build up our confidence and they show us what to do. And we know we have people we can always go to whenever we have an issue. So it's been an amazing experience for me. And I'm just feeling blessed that I was even led in this direction. 
yeah. We're blessed to have you. All right. So everything she said, but I think the, um, besides learning all the knowledge and stuff, the mindset yeah. that's created in the room, mm. you know, because, you know, we all dealing with something. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who you are. From Marquel on down, everybody's dealing with something, right? Yeah. But once you get once you get in that room and you 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 start to learn and you and it's not just the knowledge of what we're learning and how to be CEOs and business owners and things like that, but also the mindset of life that goes with it. And I'm I'm not I'm probably one of the older people in the room, you know what I'm saying, you know, but but the mindset of life and how it pertains to you being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Cuz this is not this is not like working for Xerox or somebody like that. This is it's different when you own the business, mm-hmm. you know. So that mindset part is so 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 important on our daily living just how we go into looking at the business, how we go about running the business, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just so important, especially as being an African-American in the United States of America, you got this right here has to be solid. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing, the last thing I say is like being in a room full of business owners with integrity. I mean, I think that is very standout-ish. This group is that Marquel and the entire team, they all focus on integrity and walking with integrity, working with integrity, building good relationships, you know. So just you as a person in general, not even just what you can create and what you can build, but looking at yourself and being the best person that you can be so you can put that and share, put that out to the world and share that with the world. Well, you definitely have done that. You are making huge, huge impacts, giving God the glory while you collect the checks, right? Um, um, (laughs) Because of y'all, we got to uh, create the new mantra at CAU of one check, two commas when we do our annual party. And so we are so, 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 so excited to have you. We're inspired by your growth and can't wait to see what next year brings. Thank you so much for checking out this episode. Have a phenomenal day because you absolutely deserve it. Talk to you soon. What's the difference between you and mega successful coaches and consultants with a dream business? Simple. They're getting more leads than you are. What if there was a way to get 50 to 100 leads every single day like clockwork? Would you want it? Then go to www.getdailyclients.com to access our paid ad playbook that has brought in millions of leads for our clients over the years on complete autopilot. This is the podcastfactory.com.